So now I would like to invite Mr. Gavin Bolden to come and to invite his speakers for the next panel. It's realizing the full potential of Serbia's mineral resources. Please join us at the stage. Thank you, Jagada. And uh, I very much agree, a, a really um, thought-provoking, interesting session, um, raising the levels of energy in the room wonderfully. And then they put the middle-aged white guy back on. And, uh, <laughs> but um, if I could uh, call our third speaker, Stephen, as well, please. So if I can make the PowerPoint work for myself. So um, each of our three speakers uh, have seven or so minutes on realizing the full potential of Serbia's mineral resources. And I'm taking the opportunity to say a talk myself for a couple of minutes because it's a topic that I'm particularly passionate about. And uh, there are some analogies with something called the mine we want to see that ERM has uh, developed as a concept really to change the, the conversation around sustainable mining. We became aware that sustainable mining didn't actually mean anything to many people um, and um, somewhat anachronistic. So um, we started to talk about what are, what are the mines that we want to see built uh, because of course there are many, many mines which operate in close harmony with the local communities and environment with which they sit and um, uh, those are the kinds of practices that uh, we think should be promoted in the industry. Um, I just wanted to put this slide up though. Um, this is a picture, a graphic prepared by a Japanese professor whose name I won't begin to try and pronounce, but the idea, and I think it works certainly from here, that um, there are actually, there is actually a dot at every intersection between those lines, but if you look carefully at the graphic, you can only see maybe three or four dots at any one time. And I kind of felt this was an analogy to the, the number of different things that we need to think about when we're developing large and complex mining projects. There are so many things that we need to uh, keep our eye on and make sure and not get dragged into focusing on any one uh, particular aspect. And I, just for our illustration purposes, put those uh, different things, capex, opex, environment, stakeholders, energy, permitting. A, uh, a quick graphic also on some work that ERM did um, back in about 2008 and more recently refreshed around the reason for mining projects delays. This is based on publicly available information for about 60 mine projects, the majority in North and South America. Um, and we focused on the very largest ones as well. It shows that um, an enormous proportion of the projects are delayed or abandoned. and. Um, Getting on for half of the projects are delayed due to non-technical causes. And you can see that uh, stakeholder opposition and uh, permitting issues uh, accounted for nearly 40%. The numbers don't add up to 100 because projects are delayed often for multiple reasons. But that um, equates to millions and millions of dollars um, of lost NPV due to um, non-technical factors demonstrating the importance of this issue. And uh, one of those issues is actually um, a term that we came to call resource localism, um, defined as the expectation of project affected communities that they will benefit equitably from resource development. And why not? That is the reason that so many communities accept mines located within their region. Um, and I think Projects, whilst they, they recognize that, I think most mine developers recognize that, they need to start thinking about it in a new way, um, particularly as technology starts to transform the way mining projects are run, as they become more efficient, more automated, safer, and more environmentally responsible. Often there are less of the traditional employment opportunities available that um, communities 
are used to benef benefiting from. This is uh, another idea in, from the New Economics Foundation. It's not particularly new, but it's quite a good way, I think, to illustrate how money flows into a local economy and flows out. So this is uh, the leaky bucket analogy. The bucket is the local economy, the water is the investment, and local investment goes into the bucket, and it will inevitably leak out, but the idea is that you keep that water circulating around the bucket for as long as, it, as, long as you can. So um, a good example, if you are sourcing materials from a long distance away, that is your investment leaking out of the economy um, in its first cycle. And uh, often, of course, there'll be um, many, many cases where those uh, equipment or skills are not available locally, so there's nothing else that you can do. But what we need to seek to do is to create the capacity locally to deliver those services and goods wherever they, they can, and also to change the mindsets of designers to look to source locally or examine locally available materials wherever possible, and project managers, because much of the good work gets actually lost at project implementation when your management team's um, priorities are to deliver a project safely, on time, and on budget, and the more difficult stuff um, sometimes falls by the wayside. And I'm going to just quickly touch on economic diversification as well. A uh, couple of examples out from outside the industry. I really like this graphic as a way of um, an um, energy developer showing where the materials would be sourced if he got his permits and his financing, uh, and going down into more detail, and a gratuitous Welsh flag, of course, in that graphic. <laughs> um, this is the slide I wanted to dwell on slightly. Um, so we've, companies understand the need for local employment, and uh, we're kind of getting to grips with sourcing of local materials and creating frameworks and commitments to ensure that those, uh, um, the great work at um, concept stage gets translated into implementation. A lot of our clients are thinking now, um, sorry, I should say, and they're also uh, great examples of um, mine closure and repurposing where the economy has been subsequently, excuse me, diversified uh, following um, the ending of the mining industry. A lot of our clients are now thinking about why wait until the mine closes to um, think about economic diversification outside of the industry? Why not use our influence, our money, our land as mining companies to start to diversify the economy um, away from mining generations before the mine closes so that when the mine eventually does close and it's extracted from the center of the, the local, local socioeconomic environment, the local economy and the local people just power on without it. This uh, certainly easier said than done and um, I was in a debate uh, with a global mining client recently where we concluded that it was actually rocket science was eas easier than doing this effectively because rocket science has been done. Um, arguably, this has never been properly achieved. Uh, a couple of examples about um, economic diversification. Um, some really good examples of sustainable homes and schools and colleges on land. This is a particularly good one uh, by BP, again, because I think we should always look outside the industry where we can, where there's a new university on uh, their former refinery site in the UK. But they realized that they didn't actually have to wait until the refinery had closed to build this. This is built on land that hadn't been used for decades. Um, this is an example of an eight-year life of mine project which got a permit on the basis of the diversification opportunities that would follow mining. And um, some concluding remarks, which I'm, uh, I'm not going to dwell on because I'm at danger, in danger of um, eating into the time of our main speakers. So, some thoughts there. Our first main speaker is Serjan Gavrilovic. Um, Sujan uh, spent 15 years developing, structuring, and executing projects across a dozen industries, particularly in mining power and infrastructure, educated in Serbia, the UK, and the US. He's worked with major regional industry players and Fortune 500 companies. Sujan is manager commercial for Rio Tinto for the Yada project here in Serbia.
Dobar dan. Prvo bih želao da pozdravim sve učesnike, da se zahvalim i organizatorima na pozivu i prilici da prezentujem ispred kompanije Rio Tinto. Prezentacija će biti na engleskom jeziku. Presentation will be in English.